All right, you got your Bibles, book of John, please, book of John, and we're at chapter number 10, book of John, chapter number 10, book of John is one of those great books in the Bible, and uh, amen, it's just a wonderful book, and we ended last week at John chapter 10, verse number 30 is where we ended, and we'll look at it again, Jesus says this in John chapter 10, verse number 30, you need to mark it down, highlight it. And the Bible says this, I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. Now notice how small that verse is. Notice how easy that is to understand. I and my Father are one. Just got to believe it, amen. Believe what God says and what the Bible says. Don't add to the Bible. Take away from the Bible. Just believe what the Bible says. I and my Father are one. So Jesus believed that He and the Father were one. He believed in what we call the Trinity or the Godhead. He believed that He was God. I and my Father are one. That's what He says. Now, it'd be foolish for any man to say that. It'd be blasphemy for any man to say that. If the man would have to be a lunatic or a liar, just, just deceived, one or the other. And, but Jesus would say that's totally different. I and my Father are one. Verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. They're going to kill him again. Why? Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you for my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? <laughs> uh, which one of those are you killing me for? <laughs> have I committed adultery? Have I killed somebody? Have I done? What, what, are, you, what are you going to kill me for? What are you going to stone me for? I want to know. And every man ought to know what he's getting, acu what he's getting accused for and, and persecuted for. Well, why are you treating me like that? Oh, well, what's the reason? What have I done? Show me. I want to know. So that's a good thing to ask, isn't it? Jesus says, well, why are, you, why are you going to kill me? So sometimes if you think some, it's good to ask questions. You think somebody's treating you a certain way, ask, well, have I done something wrong to you? What's the go? I mean, what's happening? I feel like there might be some kind of rift between us. Is there something wrong? Is, am I thinking wrong here? They pick stones up about to kill him. He sees the stones in the hand. Oh, what are you killing me for? What have I done wrong? Now, now you better know you hadn't done anything wrong in a situation like this. And Jesus knew he hadn't done anything wrong because he's the perfect son of God. They couldn't say anything. Now look what happens. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not. But for what? Blasphemy. And because thou being a man Make as thyself God. They understood what he was doing. They understood clearly that he was making himself, saying that he was God. And they said, that's blasphemy. And it would have been. If he'd, if he'd only been a man, it would have been blasphemy. And they'd have had every right to stone him. That's what they were supposed to do according to their law. But he says... Jesus answered, verse number 34, answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, you're God's. Wasn't that written in your law? <coughs> now he's quoting from Psalm 82, verse 6. Right. Now look at this verse, by the way. Jesus answered them and said, answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are God's. It's a lowercase g. Yeah. Lowercase g. Now, if you look in the word of God from Psalm 82, verse 6, Let's just look at it together. What's he mean? Let's look at it together, okay? Uh, Psalm 82, verse 6. Psalm 82, verse 6. I said, ye are gods. Is it not written? I said, ye are gods. Psalm 82, verse number 6. We're going to look at the context of the psalm so we get, it, get the idea. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He what? He judgeth among the what? The gods. How long will you judge unjustly? So what's he, what's he saying to these gods? You're not judging right. You're judging unjustly. So, so, so 
So these gods, lowercase g, are connected to judging. Now, I'll teach you something without any Hebrew. Amen. Any, no, I have to have Hebrew knowledge, Greek not cheat. The way you understand the Bible is you look at the context. Right. So these judges, these gods, they judge. Verse, and they're judging unjustly. Verse 2. But God's the ultimate judge. Verse 2. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked Selah? So what are these gods doing? What they're doing is this. They are judging unjustly on behalf of the wicked people. In other words, the wicked people are doing wrong. And instead of them saying, you've done wrong and therefore you, you deserve Da 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 happened to you. Instead, because they, these are their people that are in admiration, these are people that are, that are rich or whatever is the case, but they're wicked people, they're judging on their behalf. Yep. They're treating the wicked better than they should be treated. Mm. You guys getting that? Yeah. All right, kind of like today. Yeah. Give me a little money, you know, underneath the side. Right. Right. Now, look what happens. Verse number three He tells these gods. Defend the poor and fatherless. So what's he want the gods to do? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do what? Justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk in the darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I've said you're gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. Verse 7. But you shall what? Die like, Die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Now, who are these gods? Some of you say that they are the sons of gods, the angels that have fallen from heaven. But the context is talking about these gods telling these gods, is, I want you to do right by your judgment. Yeah. And I want you to make sure you take care of the poor and the wicked. But you, so these gods, he says, you're going to die like men. You think you're a god, and I've called you gods, lowercase g, but you're still going to die like a man. So these gods, lowercase g, can still die like men. Let me tell you something. Fallen angels don't die. <laughs> Fallen angels, they get bound by chains and cast into the lake of fire. That's what happens to them. They don't die like men. They're not flesh. And so this is talking about people that have flesh. Look at it says over here in the book of, uh, of uh, Exodus with me. Exodus 22. Exodus 22. Exodus 22. I'm going to show you who these are. Scripture with scripture is how you understand the Bible. Exodus 22. Look at verse number... Uh, Exodus 22, look at verse number 28. The Bible says this, Exodus 22, verse number 28. It's 22, verse 28. Thou shalt not, what does it say? Revile who? The gods. Nor curse the ruler of thy people. So God says, make sure you don't, make sure he says this, that you don't uh, revile. That means talk <laughs> against them, the gods. And the judge and the rulers of thy people. So these gods are the rulers. Right. Who are they? Exodus 7. Look at Exodus 7. Exodus 7. Exodus 7. That's exactly who they are. Exodus 7, verse number 1. Exodus 7, verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee what? A God, little g, to Pharaoh and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Was Moses a God? A lowercase g, but not God, capital G. Do you guys get it? Though there be lords, many. Even, even our culture, we're talking about Lord, Lord uh, Chancellor, or the Lord this, or the Lord that. But they are not the Lord, amen. And though they might be leaders and high in authority, they still are going to die like men. <laughs> they still going to come down like a man, like any other man. And God's going to be judging them instead of them being the big head honcho eventually one day, amen. That's what God is talking about. He's not talking about following angels in that passage. So go back to the book of John chapter 10. He said this in John chapter 10, verse number 35. 
I'm teaching you Bible, Bible. Don't make the Bible say something it doesn't say. Amen. And don't say, start trying to teach some kind of crazy doctrine that makes the Bible look foolish. Yeah. If you don't start listening to this guy, man, this guy is crazy. talking about aliens, talking about this and talking about that. Hey, you be careful about reading into the Bible. Amen. Making it say something it doesn't say. And just stick to, this is what the Bible says. Amen. When you start saying the Bible, what the Bible, it means this, it means that. And you start putting things together that are kind of wacko. You're going to be looking wacko. Amen. And making the Bible look wacko. And you may have some truth. Like there's some good King James Bible believers that kind of do things like this. Yeah. And that they do is they make the King James Bible believers look wacko. Yes, now what do you think that is? That's, that's the devil at work. To keep people from believing the King James Bible is the word of God. Because see how these wacko people are? Man, they're the ones that believe the King James Bible. <laughs> and so then you got these, I could tell you all kinds of stories. Just because somebody uses the King James Bible doesn't mean they're of God. That's right. It doesn't mean everything they're saying is truth. Yeah. You got to stick to what the Bible says. Amen. It's no good just saying, well, I believe the King James Bible, I believe the King James Bible, unless you actually believe it. <laughs> Amen. So look at John 10. It says this, John 10. John 10. So Jesus is, he, he's, he's, he's being, he's going right at them. John 10, 34. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you're gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came. So who was the word of God given to? People. <laughs> That's who it came to. He says, if he called them gods, whom the word of God came. And the scripture cannot be broken. There's your definition of the word of God. Scripture. Amen. There's your definition of the word scripture. Scripture means the word of God. Right. That's what it means. The word of God which is written. Yeah. Do you guys get that? So the scripture is the word of God that's written. Amen. That's what it is. Okay. Now look at the verse number 36. Say ye of him. Whom the father has sanctified. And sent into the world. Now, now, again, he's showing that he, got, he came from heaven. So he's saying, God sanctify me and sent me to the world. Thou blasphemous, because I said, what does it say? I am the Son, am the Son of God. Mark that for your Muslim friends. Amen. They say, where did Jesus Christ say he was the Son of God? Hmm. That's what people said about him. Yep. Not what he said about him. Show me in the text, and they'll challenge you that. Show me where it said that Jesus, Jesus himself said he was the son of God. There it is. There's one among many, by the way. He said he's the son of God. Look at the passage again. He says, thou blessed me because I said I am the son of God. So for him to be one with the father, he's saying he's the son of God. Do you guys see that? I'm a father of one. And he says here, that means I'm the son of God. So what's he teaching you? The, he's teaching the Godhead, the daughter of the Godhead, the daughter of the Holy Trinity. The God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's what he's teaching you. For him to be one with God is not like we're one, like we agree with each other. It's that they're one God. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He says this very clearly here. Look, it says in verse number 37. If I do not the works of my Father... Believe me not. <laughs> but if I do, though you believe me, believe not me. Because now why did he say that? Verse 37. If I do not the works of my father. Because they said in verse 33. He asked him, what work are you killing me for? Son of me for. Verse 33. They said, for a good work we stone thee not. So what did they admit to that he did there? Good works. They admitted he did good works. He says, we're not killing you for the works you've done. The good, the good works you've done. They didn't have any bad works to point to. Says we're killing you because we're going to stone you because you blaspheme. And he says, "Well, I've done the works of my father. <laughs> you just admitted it. He's just caught them. He's caught them in their own words." <laughs> says, "Whoa, wait a minute! You just got through saying a good work. <laughs> You're not killing. Good. Well, if I'm doing good works, the works of my father. <laughs> well, why don't you believe me?" Because remember they got through saying earlier, earlier in the book. They said, hey, show us a work. And now they admit that God showed them all kinds of good works. And they still don't believe. He is catching them in their own words. He is the master at, at showing people their sin Amen. and their hypocrisy. Lord, he says in verse number 38. But if I do 
if I do those good works of my Father, though you believe not me, believe the works <laughs> that you may know and believe that the Father is in me. The Father's where? Where? He that has seen me has seen the Father, he said. <laughs> Where's the, now he's getting even deeper. He just got this shown the Holy Trinity that God the Father, God the Son were the same, same God, and for him to be one with God was God. Now he says, I'll tell you where the Father is at. He's in me. Oh, what do you think they're going to do now? <laughs> he's not only claiming to be one, he's claiming that God is inside of him. <laughs> the Father's inside of him. Look at verse, verse number 38. But if I do, though you believe not me, but believe the words that you may know and believe that the Father is in me. And what does it say? Now, how could this be? Because they're one. You can't, you, you, mankind can't separate them. They're not, see, see, man tries to put God in a little box. And that's where you got all these different religions from. Jehovah Witnesses. Yes, sir. Mormons. Yep. And all these, because they're trying, they can't explain the Trinity. So they're trying to put it into man's philosophy, man's ideals. You can't do it. You can't do it. God said, I, my father, are one. And he goes on this passage and he says, listen, I, God, father's in me and I'm in the father. How can this be? They're so intertwined. You can't say it. Just like my soul is me. My spirit is me. My body is me. It's the same way. You can't separate them. A man can't do that. Only God can. Only God can do that. Only God's able to do that. Only the Word of God can separate both bone and marrow and spirit and soul. Only the Word of God can do that. Let me say something this passage, verse 39. Therefore, therefore, what are they going to do now? Therefore, they sought again to take him. When he said that, they're going to kill him. What? Can you imagine? But he, what? escaped out of their hand he's an escape artist too he's a master of escape <laughs> he's a master of debate and the master of escape <laughs> escaped out of the hand grab it's gonna grab me he says gets out he gets out of there now by the way he, he could have destroyed them there he didn't he just escaped he then showed them their weakness then showed them their wickedness then showed them how they're they're, they're hypocrites he says, all right, you know, I'm, I'm gone. But you're not taking me yet, mate. And that's not my time yet. You don't get to kill me yet. <laughs> verse number 40. The verse, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized. And there he abode. He stayed there where he got baptized at. Now, maybe he went there and started talking to the Father. I don't know. Verse 41. And many resorted unto him. That's a good resort to go to. By, by where he got baptized. By the river Jordan there. And, and talked to Jesus. <laughs> many resorted unto him and said. John did no miracles. But all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. Isn't that wonderful? So he. You know what? I think. Maybe Jesus Christ, when he went into, he escaped from their hand, he went there to where, he's, where he got baptized, and a lot of people come to him. Maybe he did that on purpose because he knew when they got there, they're going to be reminded of what John said. Yes, you know, this is where he got baptized. Remember what John said about him? John said that he saw the Holy, he saw the Holy Ghost like the dove just sitting up him. The Father told him that this is the Son of God. He said, this is him. And they believed on him. Isn't this wonderful? Chapter 11. Like it says in verse number 1. Chapter 11 verse 1. Now a certain man was sick. Named Lazarus. Of Bethany. The town of Mary. And their sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord. With ointment. And wiped his feet with her hair. Whose brother Lazarus. Was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him saying. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. They just say that to him and knowing that Jesus loves him and knowing Jesus is going to do something. Verse 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. 
for the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So this sickness says it's not so death can get the victory and get the glory. It's so the Lord Jesus Christ get the glory. Sometimes we've well, got to remember that when you're sitting beside a sick bed or you're sitting beside a coffin, you're lowering the body of somebody you love, you've got to remember that, Lord, not my will but thine be done for your glory. And all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And you've got to learn to trust the Lord. Now here, this guy we know is going to be resurrected. Sometimes it doesn't happen. We're going to get resurrected one day. Amen. But sometimes people get sick and they actually die. You've got to remember, trust the Lord. Yeah. You say, I don't have an answer for that. You don't have to have an answer. Just trust the Lord. You say, well, I don't understand. You don't have to understand. Just trust the Lord. Just trust the Lord. God loves them as much as you love them. He whom thou lovest, matter of fact, loves them more. You've got to learn to just trust the Lord. He whom thou lovest is sick. Yeah, people that God loves get sick. Not, at, not everybody that seeks cause of wickedness. Yeah, yeah. He whom thou lovest is sick. Sometimes they die. He whom thou lovest dies. You've got to remember that. Now you're going to face that. You are going to face that. Every one of you are going to face somebody that you love and that God loves. And you're going to put them to bed with a shovel. Yes, sir. As hard as that is. And as straightforward as that is. You can either put your head in the sand. And ignore it. Or you can stand up like a Christian. And a man of God. Or a woman of God. And set your face toward God. And say God when it comes. And it's going to come. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you because he whom thou lovest do get sick. And whom thou lovest do die. And you face life like that. Otherwise, you don't prepare for that. It's maybe going to overwhelm you like a flood. And you might not be able to handle it. Whom thou lovest is sick. Well, it says in verse number four, verse number five. Now Jesus loved who? Martha <laughs> and her sister and Lazarus. Now that's interesting for several reasons. People all the time, they get on to Martha. Martha, Martha. And they love that passage. But Mary had chosen that, that good thing. To sit the feet. And they think bad toward Martha. But any time you find the Lord Jesus Christ addressing them, he's almost always addressing Martha first. And talking to Martha first. Martha was a servant, yes, and she served. And sometimes she got, she got her eyes on people too much. She should have been thinking about the Lord. That's true. But God sure did love her. Amen. Everybody's different, amen. God, there's some Marthas in the world, some Marys in the world, and God loves them both, amen. And you might be surprised who the Lord thinks the highest the most of. And now he might get on to Martha from time to time and say, hey, you need to be more like Mary. But he's still in the time thinking, boy, isn't she a blessing though. Look at her wash those dishes. <laughs> Look at that woman work, amen. Look at what she's doing, boy. She's giving all she's got. Yes, she should be here at church. Yes, she should be praying. Yes, she should be doing. Yeah, I just, that's what she should be doing right now. She's not chosen the best thing. That's true. But boy, look at that. She's not lazy, amen. Look at her going, amen. I like that, amen. God loves hard workers. Amen. He loves hard workers, amen. He loves it. And so be careful about your judgment. Your judgment's not always right. But God's is. And he says, Martha. Does Jesus love Martha? But he also loved her sister. And that we know that's Mary. And Lazarus. He loved Lazarus. When he had heard thereof that he was sick. 
Now you think he, when he heard he was sick, he'd just take off because he loved her. When he heard that, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Where, where is Jesus? He just said he loved him. Now you've got to think about this for a minute. He said he loved, the Bible says he loved him. Mary, Martha said, hey, the one that you love is, is sick. And he does love him. He loves all three of them. And he just sits still for two days. He does nothing for two days. Man, I thought you loved me, Jesus. Why aren't you helping me, Jesus? I thought you loved me, Jesus. Why aren't you helping my family, Jesus? He does. He does love. He just has the right intent. He knows what's best for us. Lord, I thought you loved me. Why do I still have diabetes? He does love you. You just got to trust him. Lord, I thought you loved me. Why is this? Why have I lost my job? I thought you cared about me, God. Why is this happening to me? He does love you. Lord, I've been to several, try to get new jobs and nobody's hiring me. God, I thought you cared about me. You said you'd take care of me. You said you would do it, God. I thought you loved me. He does love you. He's not even talked to Mary or Martha right now. Can you imagine that? For two days. They done sent word to him. They know it's done got there. It's already got there. Probably the bloke's done come back already. And said, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? That think from their perspective. They're like you and me. Matter of fact, you're going to see later on. One's going to say, don't you care? Don't you care? Carest thou not? Don't you care for us? That's what's going to happen. Now, he, he stays there two days because he did love them. <laughs> he says, you need a little time to fight this on your own. There's going to be a reason for that. Look at verse 7. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into, into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late, of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? What are you doing? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there's no light in him. He says, boys, we're going to go, we're going to go right in the middle of the daylight. <laughs> we got to go right in the middle of the daylight. He says, don't you know they're trying to kill you? Jesus was no sissy either, was he? Yeah. He wasn't scared of things, was he? He says, no, boys, you guys are scared. But listen, we got 12 hours in a day. That's the time we just go walk right into the town. Amen. We're not going to hide. We're not going to try to sneak in there. We're going to come in there in the daylight. Amen. amen. They want to kill me. I'm all right. I can handle that. Look what happens. <laughs> Look at verse number 11. These things saith, said he. And after that, he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then the disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he's going he should do well. <laughs> we don't have to go there and wake him up, God. <laughs> do we really got to put ourselves in a place where we're going to get hurt? <laughs> Verse 13, how be it Jesus said, spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. The believers, they sleep. Let's only say rest in peace. They sleeping because the body's going to come out, Amen. They're coming up. They're not going to stay down there. Verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly. Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad. I'm glad for your sakes. <laughs> now can you imagine hearing this? <laughs> Think about this for a minute. <laughs> I mean. Jesus. We can't go there. They're going to kill us. No, mate, we're going to go there. It's going to be right. We're going to go. Not only are we going to go there, we're going to go in the daylight. Right in the middle of the day. Because he's sleeping. And he says, we got to. No, no, we don't have to wake him. No, he's dead. And I'm glad. <laughs> now, what would you think? <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> That's rough. Look at Apis, verse number 15. I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. To a tent you might, may believe. Nevertheless, <laughs> let us go unto him. Then said Thomas. Now remember, everybody talks about Thomas too. You guys, you know what's so bad about human beings? Even you read the Bible. 
You focus on the negative. We all focus on the negative. When you think about Martha, Martha, Martha. You think about David, David and Bathsheba. That's what people think about. Peter, he denied the Lord three times. People think of the negative. Thomas, doubting Thomas. Well, I'll not believe unless I put my hand in there. That's what people think about. But what about this passage? They all think he's going to die. That's what they really think. They think he's going to be killed. Now, Thomas, look what he says. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go. What does it say? Let's go die with him too. Now, why don't you think about that about Thomas? Thomas just had a warrior spirit right there. A faithful friend spirit. A man spirit. He says, they think he's going to get killed. He, the other blokes, they're scared. He says, well, let's go, guys. Let's go, let's go die with him. <laughs> let's go die with our Jesus. Now, think about that, Thomas. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? You know what you're learning about human beings? Even the heroes of faith, we all make mistakes. That's one thing. It's called human nature. And let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you what I tell him. Because some of you think the same thing. Yes, you think, man, I'm a mess. Yeah. Say things you shouldn't say. Some of you probably swear when you shouldn't swear. Some of you probably. I'm going to tell you something. You know what you are? Now, you don't hear a lot of nice things from me. So listen nice. Okay, listen close. <laughs> I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to be honest with you. You're human. You're in the flesh. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to say things you shouldn't say. You're going to do things you shouldn't do. You're going to be places you shouldn't be. That doesn't mean throw the towel in. Amen. Amen. You know what that means? Get the towel. Clean yourself off. <laughs> and get back up there and stand for Jesus again. Amen. Amen. Go stand for Jesus again. And, and you know what? You ask God to forgive you. And when the devil starts saying, how God going to use you like that? I mean, these people have seen this. You say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it had to be all of God, amen. <laughs> God's going to have to be all of you, God. That's not of me. That's what it's going to have to be. And God likes that. God likes that attitude. So don't let the devil keep you down. And don't let your failures keep you down. Get back up because you're human. Now, human beings are going, and going to focus on your negative. But there's still going to be times where God's going to use you in a positive way like God did Thomas here. And you look over your life, God, people, we try to sometimes think, even when we get judged and judged to the cross, pe preachers sometimes, Baptist preachers sometimes do this. They paint the judgment seat of Christ as if we're all going to be so, I'm not so certain about that. Because I'll tell you why. The Bible says in the passage, at the end of that thing, then shall every man have praise of God. That's what the Bible says. Then shall every man have praise of God. You know what he's going to do? He's going to say, Thomas, you shouldn't have denied me then. You should, you should have believed me, Thomas. And you know what? You missed out some of the blessings and, and you could have gotten. Those are going to believe me without seeing. They're going to get more blessings than you did, okay? That's what happened, all right? But Thomas, look here, man. I record this in the Word of God. Look at this. Let's read this about what you did for me, Thomas. <laughs> you did good then, Thomas. Every man should have praise of God, the Bible says. Not man praising you, God. That's pretty good, isn't it? You know, that paints a different picture about God, doesn't it? That God's not looking to punish you and looking to show how bad you are. God's actually looking to say, hey, I want to praise you over that. I want to praise you over this. It's just a different mindset toward God. And the love of God constraineth us. And I don't make you want to serve him because of that, amen? And live for him. Think, man, that's a good God we serve. Yeah. Let's go in the passage, verse number 16. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, and his fellow disciples, let us go also go, let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. So it took him two days to get there. <laughs> Now Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. 
Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. Can you see this spirit of this woman? She went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Martha gets up and takes off. She's a worker. She's going to do something about the problem. Martha sees a problem. She's going to go do something about it. Mary sees a problem. She's just going to sit down. <laughs> and God needs both. And both have their positive and both have their negative. Look what happens. Verse 21. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Verse 17, then when, Je then when Jesus came, he found that he had been laid in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, thou hast been here. My brother had not died. But I know. Look at this. But I know. That even now, whatsoever thou would ask of God, God will give it thee. <laughs> what a testimony, amen. I know, God, that whatever you say to the Father, God, if you ask it, it's going to happen. It's kind of like someone she's trying to say to him, Jesus, will you please come and ask the Father to raise him? <laughs> That's what she's saying to him. Verse number 23, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection, the last day. This woman knows a lot. You know why she knows? Because she trusts the word of God. I know. People say, you, 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 you are uh, uh, dogmatic. I know. Because the Bible says so. I know that the resurrection is going to happen. Amen. I know Jesus Christ is going to come get me. I know I'm saved on my way to heaven. I know I have eternal life. I know nothing shall separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I know I'm saved. Amen. I know I'm going because of what the Bible says. And she knows. I know. She says, I know. Verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. <laughs> And the life. He that believeth in me. Though he were dead. Yet shall he live. Don't you love that passage. Yes, and whosoever liveth. There's your, there's your translation right there. The, the rapture. And believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe this? Amen. <laughs> she said unto him. Yea Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come in the world. You know what she's saying? She's saying, whatever you say, I believe. <laughs> Do you believe this? I believe it because you said it. Because <laughs> you're the Christ. You're the Lord. You're the Son of God. You're the one that's going to come in the world. I believe anything you say, Jesus. <laughs> you need to get like that. Whatever the Bible says, you believe it. 23, 20, 27, I guess. She said to him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art Christ, Son of God, which should come into the world. And when he had said, she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master's come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and come to her where they saw Mary as she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. And then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. That's a good place to fall. Amen. Saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Smallest verse in the Bible, verse 35. Jesus what? Jesus wept. Wow. What a God. 
What a God. What a God is He. What a, what a Savior. What a Jesus. People say the reason why He's weeping is because He sees their lack of faith. I don't think so. I think He's weeping because He sees their hearts. He sees them weeping and crying. And the Bible says that He groaned in His spirit and He was troubled. I think he saw them crying and their hearts broken and he wept with them. Doesn't the Bible say to weep with them that weep? This shows our God and his love that he has and his grace that he has. Our God is a good God. And notice when he looks at the world, looked at them, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. The Bible says we have not an high priest that cannot be touched the feeling of our infirmities. I think, I think that my Lord, when I'm troubled, matter of fact, I don't think, I know. <laughs> I'm like Martha, I know. <laughs> he is troubled too. I think that when I'm weeping, he is troubled and grown his heart. And by the way, you know what there is in heaven? There's tears right now. God collect them in the bottles. Yes, sir. Did you know that? The Bible says the tears are being collected in bottles. There's bottles in heaven where God's collected tears. Whose tears? Our tears. They're special to him. And maybe even his own tears. People see God's not some He's not a harsh God. He cannot be touched. He's not a big Santa Claus either. <laughs> He's balanced. And God knows when to be tough. But he also is tender. He's tender and he's tough. And let me tell you something. This is the God I serve. Do you know him? Do you know him? Jesus wept. Jesus wept. We're going to stop right there for sake of time. Let me tell you something. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Savior... Some of you, you, you don't know God. If you think God is so mean, he's so hard, you don't know God. If you think God's a Santa Claus, you don't know God. He doesn't go at your every whim, but he sure does love you. He sure does care about you. There's no God like our Lord Jesus. He's the only one true God. Amen. And he died for your sins. It's his blood for your sins. And he rose in the grave. And he'll save whosoever will. Save you from what? From your sin and going to hell. Amen. He'll save you from going to hell you deserve. If you'll put your trust in him. Amen. And there's anybody worthy of trust. It's Jesus. The Bible says this. It says to save some with fear. Hating the garment spotted by the flesh. And save others with compassion. If you're here today, you know, maybe God's trying to get your attention by his great love. Yes, there's a judgment. Yes, he's going to judge you one day. There's nobody loved you like Jesus. And nobody will ever love you like Jesus has loved you. And I'm going to tell you something. Why don't you look to that love and get saved? And get saved. He'll not fail you. He may wait two days. He may let you weep. But he'll weep with you. Do you know Jesus?